Hey viewers, my name's Kara. I'm your host for Tuesdays on The Pagan Perspective, and this video is going to be up a little bit late. I'm not going to have time to do my video until tomorrow because it's time for me to go to bed now, and I spent all day today doing some grocery shopping with my mom and moving a bunch of stuff to my grandma's house so I can get moved in there this week. I'm kind of in the last stages of that, so I spent the day doing that instead. That's why this is late, but this week we are talking about deity. Again, only specific ones, so I will see you tomorrow. Okay, good morning. I know you probably can't see me all that well. It is not even 7 in the morning. This week's topic, I actually have to get on a little soapbox for a second, so bear with me. So there are two different ways to ask a question like this. The first way is to go to anyone and say, tell me everything there is to know about this certain subject. Or could you tell me about your personal experiences with this or your personal thoughts on this subject? Those are two very different things. Oftentimes people will say, tell me everything about this subject, not realizing that that is kind of more of a book report and something that we could do just as easily as you could. Bearing that in mind, I have decided to tell the collab basically to answer personal thoughts and experiences about several different deities instead of the original question, which was, tell me about the Morrigan. We could just give our personal experiences and ignore the, you know, book report aspect of it, but none of the members of this collab, regular hosts or substitutes, work with the Morrigan. So we wouldn't even be able to give you our personal experiences on it. And also it would be kind of boring to hear the same thing six days in a row, so I decided to tell the collab to pick one or two or three deities that they actually personally work with, that they have some personal insight to. Like I said, none of us work with the Morrigan, so I hope that someone will address it in some way because I want to get the original question answered. Okay, hello, this is my lunch break now. I did record on my earlier break, but when I thought about it after I got back upstairs, I realized I forgot a bunch of things, so I'm just gonna redo it all now. If you guys follow my videos at all or have been, you know, following my personal channel for the last couple of years, you probably already know my concept of deity, or if you've been watching any of my Pagan Perspective videos where I talk about deity, you know kind of how I view it, where I'm at with that, and the fact that I don't really work with any particular deities. I wrote a blog to this effect recently. I will put the link in the description where I'm kind of discuss some thoughts I've been having recently about how I go about worshiping deity and how I go about developing relationship with deity. So read that if you want to catch up, but basically I'm going to talk about a few of them. I have determined that any time I've done anything at all um, addressing a deity that kind of counts as working with them and so I tried to list all of the ones that I've worked with in any capacity. That list uh, is bigger than I thought it it was. So here's that list briefly. Gaia, Athena, Minerva, Aphrodite, Venus, Dionysus, Pan, Cernunos, Zeus, Jupiter, Thor, Ellen of the Ways, Hecate, Artemis, Diana, Apollo, Bast, Neptune, various Saxon deities-ish, and then they're not really deities, but the spirit of willow and oak, particularly. So like I said, some of those are ones like Gaia, for example, is one that I have worked with throughout my entire practice, but casually in that I never said, you know, I'm speaking to Gaia right now, but I have this concept of the Mother Earth goddess that is very much encompassing all that I've been doing. So I've kind of been working with that deity the entire time without really naming it as a specific deity, if that makes any sense. And then a few of them I just go to for very specific things, like every time this one thing comes up I'll go to that deity. And then there are a few deities that I have addressed in ritual, like I mentioned Hecate I've only worked with once, and that was very recent in a group ritual, so that was kind of like my introduction to her was through other people who do work with her regularly, so that was cool. So it was really hard for me to decide what I was going to do for this week because I don't have a lot of personal experiences with one or two deities that I could tell you, like, you know, from experience, this deity is like this all the time for me because I really only have here and there. So I'm just gonna share a couple little stories. So what I'm striving to do here 
is to tell you things from my mind that you can't look up anywhere else because I think that's really what you need to get from all of us this week is the, the personal aspect. So I do want to talk about Athena and Minerva first. I kind of always had an interest in both of those goddesses from the time I was in elementary school, but it was only from a, like a studying standpoint because I loved the mythology, especially Greek mythology, and we had to read Mythology by Edith Hamilton in school, and so I still constantly reference that, and I love the stories. And I got to see a production of Ovid's, or Ovid's, I don't know how to pronounce it, Metamorphoses, the Metamorphoses. And so just the stories are so much something that I've been into for a while. I That was poorly said. But really, there were two moments that Athena slash Minerva really stood out to me, and one was when I was reading in the Goodly Spell book, and there's a very brief mention of Athena when they're talking about numbers. And, you know, my favorite number is seven. I've always said that. You probably know that already. Um, but it came up to the number seven, and none of the other numbers really talked about deities that are involved with them, but when I got to number seven, my favorite number, it mentioned that Athena is associated with that number, and it gave several reasons why, and those reasons fit with my practice and my personal just self. And so I was like, hmm, maybe this is something more I should look into. And then when I went over to England, you'll notice a couple England references here, and I know I don't have my England vlogs up yet, so this is kind of like a sneak peek. Maybe I'll show you some pictures. Um, when I went over to England, I went to the Roman baths, which are associated with Minerva and that whole aspect, and so the gift shop was full of little pewter owls and things like that. And the experience of being there, a place that in history had been a associated with this goddess, and then now it's got a gift shop and glass walls, and you know, just like this, this coming together of old and new, and you know, being in a place that was so spiritual, that has been made so commercial, was really strange to me, but just being there kind of reawakened that interest for me. Other than that, I'm really not sure what to say about uh, my relationship with those goddesses, except um, Athena is one of the ones that I do just casually speak to or pray to whenever, you know, something comes up in the way of, you know, being just and strategizing about things and just coming up with a fair solution to things is very important to me, and she represents that to me. Another one that I wanted to tell you a story about is Dionysus, because I only worked with him once, Okay, backstory. So Dionysus is one of the deities that we talk about a lot in the theater throughout the history and how, you know, he was associated with theater and what people thought actors were like because we're like these crazy partiers and immoral and just debauchery and all this craziness. On my college campus, there are a lot of little, like, stone benches, a sort of a green man face carved into them, but it's a green man that includes grapes around it, so I always considered it to be Dionysus. It's just like a deity that I saw all the time and was so involved with what I was doing. For Maven, I decided that I wanted to have some wine along with everything I was doing, and I had grapes as part of my offering and the wine. And so I wanted to honor Dionysus as part of this, and I even jokingly said to him, I know I'm probably not one of the followers you would have chosen, you know, back in antiquity, because I'm not you know, stereotypically, I don't know, a party or, or whatever, whatever is stereotypically associated with Dionysus, you know? And I told him, I was like, I know I'm probably not one of the people you would normally choose, but I would like to honor you, blah, blah, blah. Holy crap, did he take that well. But what happened was I realized that everything that I had planned for my ritual was just wrong. No, just don't do it. And kind of everything that became important was everything that I associate with Dionysus. What was logic and planning and formality became kind of like a mini party. I would say that that was a definite positive response from Dionysus. And now there are people in the cars on either side of me right now while I'm doing this, so they're probably looking at me like I'm crazy. But I'm gonna continue because I'm almost done. The last deity that I really want to mention, and oh my gosh, this video is so long, I'm so sorry, is Ellen of the Ways. And I actually heard about Ellen or Aelin, um, through the book, I'm gonna eat my lunch now, through the book Priestess of Avalon by Marion Zimmer Bradley. That was kind of my introduction to it, and then I looked it up, looked her up, rather, and Ellen of the Ways is a horned goddess who is associated with kind of every aspect of travel. And so I 
speak to her mostly when I'm in the car, especially if there's like um, a situation where I don't feel safe. And so I ask her to keep me safe, things like that. I have a little bag of lavender up here and I don't know that lavender has anything specifically to do with Ellen of the Ways, but I always kind of hold on to that while I'm speaking to her. And because she's a horned goddess, deer are also sacred to her. And so specifically one of the things I'm very afraid of with driving is hitting a deer because there's so many deer around here. And so whenever I see a deer or whenever I think that's going to be an issue, I ask Ellen, like, you know, I would rather they cross the road in front of me, just let me see them and I will stop and I will let them go because I would rather me see them and get a little freaked out and stop and let them live than somebody else hit them. And so far that has happened every single time. There's always a deer that walks in front of me and I always see it in plenty of time. So thank you, Ellen. The other things I want to mention briefly are other places in England. I went to the Temple of Apollo the Temple of Venus, which was a very cool experience, and where else? The Roman baths, like I said. The Saxon deities at Stowe, there is a place with the statues of all the Saxon deities. That's the ones that the days of the week are named after. Thor is the only one that's not there. And then there's a grotto at Stourhead where there is a statue of Neptune, and that was just one of the absolute coolest places I have ever been and it was just like oh my god oh my literal god that's Neptune and this is awesome so that was a really cool experience and now the people who are sitting next to me are definitely looking at me like I'm a crazy person I don't know what you want me to do about it but so that's the end of the video thank you very much for watching I need to finish my lunch and get back to work and I will see you guys next week thanks for watching no I won't see you next week subs week see you in two weeks thanks for watching bye